time. Can George Zimmerman afford his freedom? Also, Casey Anthony could be taking the stand in another lawsuit. She's back in the news. Find out what she's up against. And for Utah residents, rain is a good thing. We're going to tell you why next. This is not a country song. It is. All right, if you see news happening where you are, take a picture of it. Email it to us, my5 at newschannel5.com. 408 is our time right now. All right, welcome back, everybody. George Zimmerman is once again making news this morning. There is a price to pay, though. Randall Pinkston's going to tell us why he could be free for a second time. And Zimmerman's wife is scheduled to be arraigned at the end of the month for her role in misleading the court about their finances. Casey Anthony may be taking the stand in that civil trial against her. Zeneda Gonzalez is suing Anthony for defamation. She claims Anthony ruined her life when she told police that a nanny by the same name took her daughter, Kaylee. The civil trial is scheduled to begin in January. It was one year ago yesterday that the jury found Casey Anthony not guilty in Kaylee's death. The final report has been released on the deadly crash of Air France Flight 447. Officials blamed a combination of pilot error and equipment failure for that tragedy. Families of the 228 victims have been waiting three years to hear these results, but it left them more confused than before. Some say the final report's really not final at all. Today I have a great confusion in my head. I don't understand the position of the BA because they have said yes, but, yes, but, there is this and there is that. In the end, I don't think they have accused anyone. The families want to make sure precautions are taken so that kind of tragedy never happens again. All right, and back in the U.S., there's been another deadly plane crash. Two people were killed in California yesterday. Witnesses saw the single-engine plane spiral and nosedive to the ground. Authorities are still trying to figure out what caused the crash. And a shocking interstate wreck in Texas was all caught on camera. Watch as the van slams into stop cars on the exit ramp. See that? Gosh. Holy Two moly. drivers were rushed to the hospital, and the crash is still under investigation this morning. Wow. All right, there were not any marshmallows or graham crackers at this fire. Pennsylvania's historic Hershey Park Arena was roasting. Yes, the stadium was under construction when the blaze broke out. It wasn't long before flames and smoke were shooting through the rooftop there. It took 200 firefighters and several hours to get things under control. The 75-year-old arena is actually where Wilt Chamberlain dropped his record breaking 100 points in an NBA game back in 1962. Will Chamberlain was one of my favorites when I was a kid. All right, meantime, a weight has been lifted off the shoulders of Utah residents. They are finally able to go back home after wildfires forced them to evacuate. The fire spread to more than 2000 acres before it was all said and done, but a little help from Mother Nature finally helped firefighters contain that blaze. Such a welcome sight. I mean, to come home and find rain and the smell of rain instead of the smell of smoke is it's, it's an answer to prayers that is beyond words. Kind of puts things in perspective, doesn't it? The fire is still burning, however, and crews are still fighting to contain all of it. And firefighters are making some progress on a blaze in Wyoming. 15% of this national forest fire is under control now, but it took 800 firefighters to get there. Less wind and high humidity have been a big help. 57,000 acres of the forest are charred, though. No word yet on what caused the fire. Mm. Well, the fire department in Washington, D.C. is feeling the heat, and it's not from the triple-digit temperatures. One unit was filling up a swimming pool instead of helping victims of last mm. week's severe weather, and residents want to know why. Lisa Sylvester gets some answers. Lisa Sylvester reporting the chief insists there is no personal connection between that homeowner and anyone at the fire department. I still didn't realize they would even do that. I wouldn't. Though, I didn't know? either. It's, yeah, that's just very strange. That sounds very bizarre. Mm. All right. Wait, when it comes to security, airports are wetting their whistle. Why travelers are not very happy about the extra precautions. We have that story coming up next. Plus, a competition that's pretty seedy. I'm going to give you... Bidding story coming up. 
international drug ring has put three TSA agents behind bars this morning. They've been arrested for their part in a pill smuggling operation. Federal officials say the agents accepted cash and let oxycodone pour into the U.S. while millions of dollars went out. Two police officers were also arrested in that bust. Well, if you're planning on flying, you might want to leave your drinks behind. The TSA is taking new measures to keep airports safe, but it has travelers upset. They're being asked to hand over their drinks for testing, even the ones they buy inside the terminal. Passengers say airport officials are taking things too far. Well, you know, I'm always glad that my safety is a priority. I think testing drinks after they've already been bought might be a little extreme. The water or the juices or anything you buy here in the airport, the TSA is going to come over and look and check and test it. I mean, it's just ridiculous. The TSA says there are many layers of security throughout airports and passengers can be subject to additional screening at any time. What better way to kick off the summer than with watermelons? <laughs> Oklahoma was the scene of a nationally recognized competition this week. That's where we found the 55th watermelon seed spitting contest. And boy, these folks can really spit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some more than 33 feet. Really? But nothing will beat the world record of nearly 67 feet. That was set back in 1989. One couple's lifetime of memories gone like that. And they were just feet away when they disappeared. And then Tennessee isn't the only place dealing with bad weather. It also caused problems in one neighborhood. Wow. We'll also tell you how one Tennessee city is handling a very fishy situation, Ooh. so to speak. Ooh, stinky too. And if you see news happening where you are, take a picture and email it to my5 at newschannel5.com. Welcome back, everybody. Right now it's 414. Google was a key player in identifying a double murder suspect. A search was conducted as part of a follow-up after Chicago police arrested this man last month. They found the 23-year-old Ronnell Jones was featured on America's Most Wanted. Jones was pulled over in Chicago last month and a search was conducted. Jones is suspected of breaking into the home of his sister's best friend and shooting four people and killing two of them. Among the victims was a five-year-old boy. It was a collection 60 years in the making, and now, after being robbed, all the presents from a husband to a wife are gone. The Texas couple was sitting in their living room watching TV with headphones on. The robbers broke into their bedroom through the back door, 20 feet from where they were sitting. Neither the man or wife heard a thing. I hope they have a pang of conscience sometime in their life, because I worked for what they got. They didn't do a damn thing. Mm, the robbers made off with about $20,000 worth of cash and jewelry. For Pennsylvania police, the chips fell into place. A trail of potato chips led them to a man who allegedly stole nine bags from this Pittsburgh subway. 21-year-old Benjamin Sickles broke a glass door and tried to get to the cash register. Well, he couldn't get to the cash, so he took the chips instead. I like chips. <laughs> Cities from the Midwest to the East Coast are starting to cool down after days of record-breaking temperatures. And as Drew Levinson reports, as temperatures drop, damaging storms continue to pop up. The record-breaking heat wave is blamed for at least 35 deaths, including a four-month-old left in a car near Indianapolis. And here in Tennessee, the high temperatures handed us a stinky situation. Just be happy you aren't smelling this right now. Once temperatures in South Knoxville hit 100, the oxygen left and the fish suffocated. The fish were left to cook in the sun for three days because the lake is privately owned by a man who lives out of town. Neighbors are trying to get in touch with the lake owner. And Amy, an attempt at getting a break from all the heat took a deadly turn this weekend. A 15-year-old was part of a rafting trip up in Indiana. The group stopped to take a break. The girl went under while swimming and never resurfaced. Divers were brought in and found the body a couple of hours later. Conservation officers say the river has been busy with the recent heat wave. They've been warning people about venturing into the water. If it's not one thing, it is another. A county in Colorado flooded last night. Streets and parking lots underwater. Local businesses took on water as well. Take a look at these pictures we have in. Some fence lines are still under ponds of standing water. Now the rain has stopped for now, 
But this amount of water does bring the residents another concern. Toxic chemicals from the recent wildfires are now running into their drinking water. Well, from bad to worse.